I'm Dean Safola and this is the Azure Academy. So last time we were looking at building our first virtual machine in Azure and that should be done now so let's see how it's going. Okay so our VM finished deploying and the order of the way that things got deployed is from the bottom up here and so we had our network security group deployed then our availability set our storage account, public IP address, network interface, storage account uh, configuration for all of the extensions uh, and monitoring that we're going to be doing, then the VM itself, then the diagnostic extension, and the shutdown schedule. And these two kicked off uh, at about the same time since they were both only waiting on the virtual machine to finish. And it just so happened that this one kicked off first, which is why it was still running when this one was complete. So now if we look at our output, we have an output of a username. And that's so we know what our username is that we're supposed to log on to the box with. So let's go back to our Azure Academy resource group. Okay, and we'll organize our stuff by type. And now you can see we have a disk, and the disk has the name of our VM, and then OS disk, and then it has this uh, unique identifier in the name. And then same thing with our network card and with our NSG. And so we have names that maybe are not ideal for what it is that you want to do. Not a problem. We can actually specify these names to be uh, whatever we want through a template-based deployment. And uh, But when you deploy through the portal, uh, you get whatever names and, and unique identifiers we give some of these systems so that uh, we can be sure that they are unique across Azure. So we have our VM, and now inside our VM, since that's what we're here to focus on, here's our VM blade, same stuff in the overview section as always. Then we have our settings section, then we have an operations section, monitoring, and support and troubleshooting. So kind of the same layout, but the items here are different. And as you can see, our layout looks different than our virtual network. We have some of our overview information about uh, the name, what type of operating system it has, what the size of the VM was, that this has a public IP address and what that IP address actually is, and uh, that this is deployed in the virtual network called VNet, in the subnet called Management. The DHCP here is from Azure, and that's why it says Configure. And, uh, uh, and that again came from our virtual network. It's in the resource group called Azure Academy. It's currently running in the East US region. It's in my subscription. There's my subscription ID. And then in this section, we have some of the monitoring and metrics related to this VM and the network, compute, disk operations. And then under networking section, we see our network card up at the top here and that this has a public IP assigned to it. There is also our private IP address. Accelerated networking is currently disabled and that's something we'll talk more about at another time, but basically that's more high performance networking. And then we have our NSG because our NSG or network security group was attached to our network card. And that's where we have our RDP rule. Then we look at our disks and this is where you can provision other data disks for this VM. And then we have our size, which will bring us back to that sizing chart that we had seen earlier. And you can change the size of the VM. Changing sizes does require a reboot, but you can change the size to anything else that's available in your region. So if, for example, you wanted to use an M series VM, which are uh, up to four terabytes as of today in RAM, and that is not available in the East US region. So you could not choose that VM SKU. You'd have to bring your VM over to another region to do that. And there are ways to do that, but we're going to skip past that at the moment. So any other region that is available, uh, sorry, any other VM type or SKU that is in your region, you can switch to. And it just takes a reboot. Then we have a section for security, which we'll skip over right now. We'll cover that more when we talk about Azure security. We have our extensions. And our extension shows that diagnostic uh, extension that we had provisioned. And then we have continuous delivery and availability set, which we'll skip for right now. We have our configuration, which refers to the managed identity service, which is Azure Active Directory related, as well as that Azure hybrid use benefit where we said we already have a Windows license. And then we have our properties. 
And in our properties, there's the resource ID for our VM that we deployed. It also has versions of our agent. This is the Azure agent, which allows us to build, deploy, monitor, manage your system, as well as apply extensions, and some other information about the VM. Then we have our lock, which uh, we've already talked about. And then we have our automation script, and that's where we see the template that was required to build um, our resources. So in our operations section, we have our auto shutdown schedule, which we had talked about. You can change your schedule here if you want to, or your notification. You can add a webhook or a email address to that. We have Azure Backup and Disaster Recovery Services. Update management, which would allow you to integrate Azure Automation into uh, your VM. So we would actually manage all of the, the patches and update installations for you. Inventory, which is kind of like the CMDB or a configuration management database. So we can track uh, what your system has on it in terms of sof software and hardware. Uh, watching uh, whatever changes happen. We could run direct commands or scripts on your systems. All these monitoring tools are here and either free or low cost as part of just running a VM in Azure. And we have other kinds of monitoring and metrics, alerts, diagnostics. You can look at a diagram layout of your VM. There we go. There's our virtual machine. It's got a disk. It's got a network card. It's got an extension. Okay. And then other things related to health. Now, boot diagnostics is something that we'll look at quick. This is where you can actually see a screenshot if you were to open the console, like you're in a physical data center, you could open a console, or you could open in VMware or Hyper-V, open the, the VM console and see what's going on in the VM right now. If you forget your password to VM, you can reset your password from the Azure portal. You can also do a redeploy. Now, what does that mean? So redeploy is where I want to take this VM and I think something's not quite right on the host that it's running on. So I want to click redeploy and that will take the VM and move it to another host in Azure within the same region. If you're in availability zone, then it will move it somewhere else in that same availability zone as well. Then we have the serial console, which we're not going to look at right now, but this would actually give you some level of console access, which today, as of July 1st, 2018, in Linux, you could log on to the console in like a SSH kind of experience. In Windows, right now, you get the SRC console, which allows you to do things like take a crash dump or enter a command line experience. And then, of course, we can open a ticket. So that is VMs um, in a very big nutshell. There's a ton more that we could cover in here and we will eventually, but I want to leave you with at the very top here, we have our ways to interact with this VM. Stop it, restart it, capture an image from this existing VM, move it to another resource group or another subscription like I had talked about previously, delete this VM, refresh our console and connect. So when you are clicking on connect, if it's Windows, then we will be defaulted to the RDP interface. And if we have Linux, we'll be defaulted to the SSH interface. So we have a Windows VM. So I'm going to click here to download the RDP file. And we'll open our RDP file. And we're being prompted for our login, which was TD. And there we go, we've got a secure RDP session. And this is the default experience logging on to a VM for the first time. Okay, and it's logging us in. Okay, and we're logged in, and this is our Server 2016 desktop. Okay, and let's look at our local server. Okay, you can see that we are in uh, computer AA 2019, just like we had from the Azure portal. Currently in a work group, so no domain yet. Uh, IP4 and IPv6 are enabled. 
and remote management is uh, currently enabled. That's how we could RDP into the box. And then it has the VM size that uh, we had allocated to it, which was uh, one gig of RAM. And then we also have our operating system disk. And there we go is our operating system disk. And that's a 127 gig volume, which is the default for all Windows servers. And then we have that temporary storage that we talked about, the SSD allocation uh, that is directly connected to our local host. And if you go on that drive, there is a warning here. It's a readme file that basically tells you anything on this drive is temporary. You will lose it. There's no way to recover it. Don't use this for anything that you need. Uh, something that's temporary storage is fine, but in general, don't put data on the temporary storage drive. Okay, so that's our VM. So now that we've deployed one VM, uh, let's deploy a Linux VM. Okay, I'll clear that. And we'll go back to our Azure Academy, and this one will do much faster. So let's say Celeste12SP3, and we'll do this. Uh, we'll create, so we'll walk through this experience pretty fast. So we'll call this AA Celeste 12, and we'll use LNTAD. Now doing Linux systems, you can allocate a SSH key if you want, or a password, which I'll do just for time's sake. And we'll also put this in our Azure Academy resource group in our East US region. Now notice there is no Azure hybrid use benefit, and that's because the licensing for this particular system comes from another company outside of Microsoft. Okay, and then we can pick our VM size, which will be how many CPU, RAM, and disk, and IOPS, and local storage, etc., that we have. And uh, for this one, I'm going to deploy this guy, which costs more than our previous VM. Okay, and we're going to deploy this guy into an availability set which will pick our existing one, just for a quick example. Manage storage, same virtual network, but this time we're gonna put him in a different subnet. We'll also give him a public IP address, as well as a SSH uh, rule in our NSG, and we'll turn on our scheduled shutdown, and we'll leave this at 11 p.m. We won't be uh, monitoring but we will use our diagnostics same diagnostic account and then we're going to hit OK so same process as before we'll hit create and now we'll monitor our deployment and I'm going to pause the video here and then come back as soon as our VM finishes allocating and then we'll SSH in Okay, we're at the four minute mark and our VM is finished deploying and now we're deploying the diagnostic extension. And again, because our shutdown only required our VM to be allocated, uh, this guy popped up first, but this one's already finished. Okay, so in four minutes and 58 seconds, our VM was built, allocated, set up, configured, diagnostics enabled, etc. And let's go back to our Azure Academy resource group. And now you can see we have a bunch of stuff. So we organize by type, and then it makes it a little easier to find our VMs. And so here's our Linux VM that we just deployed. Okay, you see a different public IP address. And we're going to hit connect, and it defaults over to our SSH. And for that, we get a SSH link, so I'll type my command prompt here, and we'll paste in our SSH command, and yes, I am sure I want to. It'll prompt me for my password or SSH key, and I am logged on to this VM in Azure. So, there's the name of our VM, and here's our running processes. 
how much memory we had, our uh, disk configuration. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, what uh, what OS are we running? Uh, let's see. That was in slash Etsy slash OS dash release. There you go. It is Celeste 12 SP3. So we've successfully logged on to our VM with SSH, which I will exit. And uh, the last thing I'll show you in our portal here, if we go back to our Azure Academy resource group, is inside our virtual network. And you can see we have two IP addresses allocated, and these are allocated to the network interfaces not the VMs directly, but the network interfaces that exist for both of those VMs. And because these are on different subnets, they are the first ones in their subnets, so they get the first IP address available in their subnets. That's why there is 4 and 20 over here. And DNS is still being provided by Azure. And in our next video, we'll promote a system to be a domain controller, and then we'll have our own DNS server, and we'll change this to be our custom DNS server. So that's what we'll cover next time.